On a night of nominations and acceptance speeches, who do you reckon is the SPL's best goalkeeper in a leading role? It would be a lengthy list of nominations with Marion Kello of Hearts sure to be on the shortlist after another top performance, this time at Pataudry. Craig looked on in horror at Tyne Castle two and a half months ago as the Aberdeen team he had yet to take over was hammered by Hearts. 5-0 only five weeks after a record 9-0 slaying at Celtic Park. Another 5-0 last weekend, this time in their favour and against one of the teams of the season, Kilmarnock. For Aberdeen, it's been quite a turnaround. Craig and Archie in full charge against Hart this time, Xander Diamond injured, Andy Considine took his place in central defence and captain Paul Hartley returned against his old team with Derek Young dropping out. Jim Jeffries had to change nearly half the Hearts team, Black and Palazuelo suspended, Wallace Suzo and Obua injured. The five replacements were Craig Thompson, Roviet, Stevenson, Templeton and Driver. At the Dodry, Liam McLeod. This game's a real barometer of how far Aberdeen have come under Craig Brown. 5-0 Hearts it was in December. Here come the Dons with Hartley. And now Aluko. And it's Aluko! Well, he's scored a couple recently in his return from injury. He's been denied here by an outstanding save from Marianne Kello. When a season the Hearts goalkeepers had. Jim Jeffries not happy with the way his team have started. McArdle waits with that bandage. And there's McArdle! Kello again! Well, Kello's best game of the season came against Rangers at Tynecastle. They won that one 1 0. He's keeping Aberdeen out here. Smith. Good build up again this from Aberdeen. Milsom. Oh, it's terrific stuff. Maguire. Well, Chris Maguire needed to get that either side of Kello. What a good build up this was from Aberdeen. Rob Milsom at the heart of it. He's been a real find by Craig Brown. Driver. First start since last April for Andy Driver, and that's good play from him. First start and looking to improve his fitness. Elliot. Oh, he's not far away. Well, Jamie Langfield seemed reasonably calm about this. First real attempt by Hearts. Elliot touching it back to Rudy Scatchel. Well, he was one of the main protagonists in Hearts. Thumping win over Aberdeen in the capital. First Minister enjoying proceedings in the northeast. Big Hearts fan as well. A late challenge there. Plays raging on. This is Ryan Jack. To Tua Luko. Like Chris McGuire in the first half, Shawnee Aluko's played this into the best possible area for the goalkeeper. Hearts on this fantastic run, only the old firm have beaten them away from home. Ryan Jack, oh, it's a good run! Wrong side of the post. Well, it's good play by Ryan Jack. He's come into the first team this season, hasn't let himself down generally. Callum Elliott did well. Templeton goes down. Shake of the head from referee Mike Tumulty. Well, the Hearts bench are raging about that. McArdle was the Aberdeen player closest. Egert Jonsson with the free kick. The Hearts pressing for an unlikely winner. Now Aberdeen got the other end. They're chasing an unlikely top six place. This is Maguire. Nick Blackman! Guess who? Marianne Kello again.
That's 20 points from 11 games you've been in charge of Aberdeen, Craig. It would have been 22, was it not, for Marion Kello <laughs> there yesterday. Is he yeah. a candidate for player of the season? Oh, I would say so, yes. We've seen some very good goalkeeping already in the programme. McGregor had a great save for Rangers and then, of course, uh, we saw Darren Randolph. And, but I think Kello, uh, for me, is the best goalkeeper in the league at the moment. And, you know, he proved that yesterday. He was absolutely fantastic. What this also shows, of course, is the number of efforts you were having on goal. Yeah, well, I'm pleased that we made so many chances, particularly against a good team. You know, I hear, you know, Hearts they were missing one or two players, but we had five players out through injury as well. So, you know, it was under diamond in the morning of the game, and uh, of course we've got Mackey, Folly, Fivey, and they uh, pull it all out as well. So, you know, I think they can't make that as an excuse for not being uh, on top of the game. And is it mind over matter, as with Motherwell, in terms of playing good football on a surface which maybe uh, doesn't cater for it greatly? Well, it's not the best surface, but there are worse, I think, in the SPL, and we never, we never mention the surface to the players. You don't want to give them an excuse before they go out, because, you know, if you make a case that the pitch is very poor, you know, that's them got an excuse for a poor performance. So we're not going to tolerate that. They've got to play well wherever they play, whatever the surface. Now, I gather there was a split opinion in the technical area on the penalty <laughs> claim, but it wasn't the way you would think because apparently Jim Jeffries at the time didn't think this was a penalty well, and you did. you know, I'm friendly with Jim and he's standing there and when that happened, I looked over, I thought it was a penalty and I said, oh, that's a penalty, Jim. And he says, no, I don't think so. Uh, at the time, he didn't think so. But afterwards, when he saw it on television, he, he did think so and I didn't, you know. And he said, you know, the angle that the referee's at, it didn't look a penalty. But from the, that angle there behind the goal, it looked a penalty. No, I still don't think it was one, but uh, at the time I thought, oh, here we go, a penalty. And Mike Tumulty refereed the game exceptionally well, as he has done most games I've seen him do this season. So, you know, I was glad that he didn't give the penalty, and I don't think it was one.